Hello everybody, and welcome back to another Scrap Mechanic Survival video. Today we're going to make a fun, fast and stable truck for hauling stuff. I saw a lot of people asking on Reddit, like how do we uh, make stable vehicles, Whoa. and um, honestly I had the same issue, because the physics have changed quite a bit over the years. I used to make a lot of vehicles uh, when the physics were different, and of course I used to make smaller vehicles, because uh, in creative we never had to haul big stuff. And so I also had some uh, trouble getting uh, nice fun vehicles, uh, so I just decided to make a simple truck. I inspired, uh, I was inspired by Khan and Cosmo survival trucks from the co-op series. And um, I thought let's just keep it simple, uh, make it able to fit uh, eight packages, food packages in the, in the bed. And just put some weight on the bottom, as you can see this black stuff is metal and at least it should be stable and then I took it for a spin and it was actually really fun to drive it uh, it drifts rather than than flips it also drifts on the tarmac the tarmac is a bit grippier and that's where most vehicles uh, tend to uh, flip a bit and even uh, loaded up it's pretty uh, it's pretty fun to drive so yeah it fits eight boxes but you can easily put two layers of them in there with three layers, it's still uh, quite drivable. You gotta be a bit more careful. And with four layers, yeah, of course, it gets a bit tippy. So uh, let me cut to a video to a clip I recorded earlier where I'm driving with some boxes. And um, there you can see, uh, you can still see it drift a bit, I believe. And I'll also cut to a video where I put a crane on it. I do really like it with the crane but sadly it does cost a bit of performance so uh, I will show you how to make the crane how to adjust this truck but I uh, yeah I will I will explain as I'm building it how to uh, how to prevent it from being too laggy so I'm gonna load a more recent version of the world because this is an old version in the newer one I already converted it to a crane truck and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to build it. Alright, I'm in the new world. Here you can see what it looks like with the crane. You could probably already see it in the thumbnail, but it's probably a bit small to see. It's um it's pretty fun. Let me uh take this for a quick spin. Um you could put the bed down with one, you could put the sides down with two, which helps sometimes when you flip you can get it back upright. Of course, when you're uh, hauling a lot of cargo, it's too weak, but it's really nice if you just, uh, sometimes it works and it's nice for easy access. We got the crane here. Uh, from the clip earlier, I believe you could see how it works, but um, it has some basic functionality, like one lifts the arm, two rotates it. If you want to go the other way, you gotta flip the bearing rotation. Because if I didn't do it this way, I would have to program something that uh, adds two buttons for rotation and then it's so slow this is just quicker in use it's easier it's less parts it's cheaper i thought this was a good solution and then with three and four you can extend, extend the pistons one brings the arm down five opens the claw and grabs so i usually just kick the put the farmer right next to the truck i pull up right next to it and if it's in a ditch or something, I just take the piston and extend it. So that's that's good enough. It's still a whole lot easier than slamming the, the farmer and getting it up the ramp while you're on, on the slope yourself maybe. It's not ideal, but I would have to make it so, more com uh, so much more complex. I thought this was a good compromise personally. One thing though, if you use this arm, I would get rid of the moving side panels because that's a, just a bit too much collisions and complexity near each other. If I drive this around and I have my main car, my uh, my sawing, my logging and mining vehicle is also my exploration vehicle. If these get close to each other, then it gets a bit laggy. And uh, I made this truck partially to. Oh, <laughs> partially to uh, to transport that other vehicle and that's just too much all because of the crane so that's a bit of a shame that's just how scrap mechanic is nowadays and uh, it could also be my PC it's not super powerful 
By the way, I'm a little bit under the weather, so I'm sorry for any sniffles. I'll try to uh, cut out any sneezes and coughs and stuff. Because I know uh, that can be distracting. So let me just uh, dump my inventory and load up on a whole lot of stuff. Actually, I already prepared some cases. Can I attach these like this? Yep, that's most of it. All right, so we're gonna start with the bed. Um, I'm gonna make it exactly 16 wide and then 29 blocks long. Um, you could make it two blocks narrower uh, because it doesn't need all this room, but it's fine. Uh, it does help with stability, the extra width. And um, I'm now gonna make the, the one I think that drives the nicest, but if you want to add the crane, then you should take off one row, make it one block narrower, because then you will have an, uh, an odd number width, and then you have a nice center point for the crane. And also, if you wanna um, add the crane, you should make it four blocks longer, so then it would be 33 instead of 29 long. Now we're gonna make the cap, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten high, but it's gonna start one block below the bottom here. It's gonna make it look a bit more well, cab like So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're just gonna make a whole stretch of wood across the width. That looks so chunky right now. And we're gonna make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine long. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, this one will put across. I should make an opening here that's gonna make everything easier. And just fill this in. This will be the floor, and the floor of the cab will be one block higher than the floor of the bed. And we're gonna make a sidewall here. The sidewall is gonna be two blocks, and same here. And we're just gonna turn this into, like, not a cube, but a, what you call it? Well, we're just gonna finish this frame as it is now. And uh, let's see, let's also put two blocks of wall here, two blocks height. And we're gonna do a row of blocks here on the bottom on both sides and then we pretty much have our side windows as they will be. And uh, let's have a look. We're gonna have two blocks of height there, four blocks here. Yeah, so we're gonna add two layers on the bottom of the front and we're gonna add one layer here that looks weird I don't know if that's correct I'm gonna double check that yeah I think this is yeah one too low that looks weird and of course a row here and this top row we're actually gonna replace with uh, the I-beam corners, as you can see here, but I forgot to bring those, so we'll do that uh, back upstairs in the base in a bit. Now I'm also gonna put some wood here, and we'll make like a wheel well. I'm just gonna make a really rectangular wheel well, and it should be five blocks by two, which it is. So that's good. So yeah, it's pretty pretty easy shape. Let's let's see how I how I made these um, this little hole. Two blocks, five blocks. So on this one it will be two by six because this one is one block wider than the truck we have there. I like it. Well, let's let's keep it consistent. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So on one side, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, 
it's too big on that side. Of course, this doesn't matter. Make it as big as you want. Sometimes I make it big enough to walk through or to crouch and crawl through. This is just so I can uh, walk on the bed and then whoop, jump into the seat like that. Now, before we forget, I will also remove a strip here. I will leave the outer blocks and then I can put some bearings there. And I'm gonna put some wood like this. And some wood like this. And actually, since we're already on the lift, I'm gonna weld it right away so I can't forget. Nice. Let me check how long this bed is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Currently it's one, two, three. You can see the bottom row. Four, five, six, seven, eight. This build uh, can be uh, relatively cheap. It's mostly wood. There's some metal underneath. You can, um, you do need a couple controllers, but if you don't want the moving side bits that saves you a controller, you can of course make everything as you want it to be. Uh, I'm gonna make a wheel well now. It is one, two, three, four, five, skip six, then take away five blocks. Mm, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I remove one, two, three, four, five by two. I did this so uh, we get a bit more wheel clearance. If we didn't do this, then um, we would have to raise the truck. And I like how it sits now. Suspension is a bit stiff, but when you load it up, it uh, the wheel sits nicely in that opening. Now let's see. Let's um, let's see what I brought. Let's first put in some seats. I think I should have both here. I have a fancy driver's seat here, but you really don't need it. Uh, depends on how many features and buttons and switches you want. Mm, let's also take out four lights and four suspension parts. Let's actually see what level those are. Two, one, one, two. One, two, two, that's perfect. Um, at first I had uh, level one suspension all the way around, but later I realized if you put suspension level two in the back, it gets a bit more comfortable. So let's see where are those located exactly on the edge. And check the lights real quick. Yeah, so I uh, kept it uh, looking I, I think maybe the lights at the bottom, I mean, if you raise the lights one, it might look better, but I kind of like, like every vehicle has a face and this face is a bit goofy. You can of course uh, remove some wood here and put in some mesh for a grill. Then especially I would raise the lights one block, I think, but I think it, it looks fine. It's uh, This wasn't necessarily a cosmetic build. It's just a fun build. So let's see, I think I have the seats like this. I have four blocks in between the seats. So I guess I have them one more further apart because then I have a four by three hole where the gas tank goes. And did I bring one of those? I hope so, otherwise I can, uh, I can take one from upstairs. Mm. So yeah, let's see this overkill this one has. Can you see how many? Yeah, this is level five. This is way overkill. You don't need that. We're just gonna add uh, front wheel steering. So let's take some. Um... Let me actually bump up the brightness because well, night. It's always night in this game. Oh, I already had it up. Oh, I'm sorry for the washed out screen. I I don't even realize I have it always up. So let's uh, let's take some metal. I have 256, it should be enough. And we're just gonna make some some fake axles. I'm gonna put a strip of metal right here and not on the outer edge because there um, we just want uh, the suspension and we don't wanna lower that. And let's see if I put it on the lift again, how will it place the lift? Well, it's fine, I'll just place it here. Crank it up. Uh, 
and we'll, we'll improvise it like this. And now let's see, I actually also want to put a bit of metal here. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter all that much. I guess we won't have any metal here because we will have the, uh, we will have the, the chest with fuel there. By the way, I'm using a different microphone from today on, so I hope the audio is good. Only now after recording. Uh, yeah, that should be right, right? Let me have a quick peek on this one. Whoops. <laughs> on the narrow one for the um, for the crane, I have three rows of metal, uh, and you do feel it's a bit. It has less weight on the bottom and more on the top. It does feel a bit less stable. So you could always add more metal, but I also wanted to keep it light. So yeah, that's some stuff to consider. Engine controllers, ignore this timer logic. This is, uh, I put it there for easy, uh, uh, for easy dumping of, uh, what should we call it? <laughs> I can't speak anymore. I have no engine. Uh, I put it there for uh, for emptying food crates at the trader. I mean at the packing stations So yeah, let me just get some more missing parts and I'll be right back All right back with some parts So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bit of wood on top of this cover That way we can crawl underneath raise it up a bit and then we can easily place This of course if you make the entire truck uh, one block narrower, I would recommend placing it like this because it's three by four and then you can still have it centered. But we're gonna place it like this and then you can easily see fuel level. I mean, if you're using in cap view, it all depends on uh, how you do it. Just place this down. Mm, but it's pretty easy to uh, move the camera up and uh, see it like that. So now let's take some pipes, please tell me. Yes, I do have the pipes here and I have some suspension. Let's start working on the steering, the wheels, all that stuff. So we're gonna need two level one suspensions from the front. We're gonna set those to their stiffest. Um, level 1 suspension in the back would be fine, but as I said earlier, I like it better with a level 2 suspension in the back, also at its stiffest. So here we're not going to place a bearing, it's not going to have rear wheel steering, of course you can experiment with that. Actually we're not going to place pipes either, my bad, we're just going to straight up place some suspension parts. Let me check if that's actually correct. Yes, it is. Uh, that way the, the height works out. Now we're going to need some wheels. And of course, we're going to need an engine. I'm using a level 5 engine just for fuel efficiency. Um, it's not necessary. Let's see, where, where do I always put it? I think I have like a little gap here and then you can set the engine speed. And I can remove this slab here. I think I actually added one further to the front. Yeah, it doesn't matter all too much, but you know, weight, weight distribution is a, is a thing. So let's just uh, be consistent. This so way it should drive exactly the same. Always flip the left two bearings. Now we're going to hook up the steering to these two. And always flip the rotation of those two. Right click. Mm, now what else do we need? We need some controllers. Uh, you could just use basic controllers. But I think I had some that were already upgraded to level 3. Uh, actually let's first place the wheels. I should have those here. Yep. 
and then we can see how we want to place the controllers because I like to place them in such a way that I can uh, be outside the truck and doing stuff like loading packages or whatever and I like to be able to um, whoa it really sags there uh, I like to be able to um, to look in the wheel well and change the controller so let me put one like this maybe let's hook up the steering wheel to the engine and then the wheel stop and let's add some stiffness to these shocks here level 2 all the way to their max stiffness I think it's only two more than at level 1 and it's gonna sit a bit high but it's fine uh, let's have a quick peek see if I'm still being consistent here engine all the way to the front I have that one there, that one there don't need the logic and I have the lights one block to the front already put this one back on the lift let me take the controller I, I like I like to rotate it in such a way that there's something subtle facing outside like you I don't want a screen there or anything like this would be a bit flashy come on <laughs> you gotta rotate these things so often sometimes is that really how I did it? I thought I did it behind the wheel. No, nope. okay, it's fine, doesn't matter. Mm, now let's take out some switches. I should have a bunch, yep. And let's take out four lights. So we could put some rear lights. I have white lights in the middle. Place them like this. Yep, um, I make uh, one light red because it's a rear light and that's kind of like how it works but I also make one white just because white lights they give off so much more light so you can actually see uh, see something behind you mm, some more bearings I'm gonna have to start with all the pipes in a bit I should have enough pipes for one side, I don't know if I have enough for both sides, but I'll at least make one side and uh, you'll get the gist. Mm, let's put some switches on the back and connect them to the driver's seat. Shouldn't need those. This is usually how I do it, I place two like this, and then if I'm uh, doing something I could just click this one and uh, the thing goes down, the, what do you call it? Well, you know what I mean. And I use two for the other one. And I'm gonna hook this up to controller one. And one is gonna hook up to this. I'm first only gonna connect one. It's gonna go down about 105 degrees. It depends on the, how much is in there, how much you want. It's enough to jump in and that's good enough. And it's gonna come down way. If you, it's gonna come way down. Um, at least two blocks if you have it loaded. You could do it 120. You can, uh, of course, you can always do what you want. Uh, now I'm also gonna hook up the other one just for added strength. Of course, you will need a level two controller for that, but it's fine if you don't have that. And then probably we have to flip this one because they always work together and this will work well so this one yeah I guess it's fine I expected it to go up when I connected it but nope it's fine cool now let's see uh, where exactly I have the bearings on this I have pipes and a free straight and then horizontal pipes free straight I have one yeah skip one bearing one oh <laughs> excuse me two three four five so 
This is of course optional. If you're going to add a crane, I would not recommend doing this necessarily. One, two, three, four, five. But we will do it here. I'm not going to put a crane on this one probably. Well, I will for this video, but then I'm going to take it off again. Because I already have one with a crane and I also want a basic one. So we're going to put bearings on either side. Here I would really recommend putting bearings on either side because um, if you want to be able to use this to uh, to unflip your vehicle then it really helps that uh, the added strength from two bearings Ooh. connect like this and now we're gonna take out the weld tool and we're gonna weld these pieces together yep and weld, let's see, these two pieces together. Nice. Cool, and now we're gonna start on the pipes. Jump cut to a moment where I realized I made a mistake. I started to explain how to make these side panels, this uh, sort of mesh-like uh, stuff. And I started attaching to the truck and parts to the part that moves and more to the truck. And then I realized, wait, that's not that's an issue. We want the whole thing to to hinge down from this panel what uh, which moves like so so uh, I'll show you again how uh, how we build this um, so we're gonna go before the wheel well we're gonna skip the first one then we're gonna place a corner pipe then we're gonna skip three places and we're gonna place another corner pipe and when all is well it's exactly in between these bearings and on the top we go corner pipe then we do a straight pipe then we do a cross section straight pipe cross section straight pipe and then on top we do a t-junction nice and then we're gonna go one two three horizontal straight pipes gonna need some more of those like so and then for the wheel well we're gonna uh, oh, stuck on the on the bed I will change that angle actually it's way too high how about 120 that's better so for the wheel well we're gonna do something a bit different I'm gonna We're gonna do one, two, three, and then normally we would have a, a crossing, but we're gonna do a T junction with a, yeah, with nothing on the underside. One, two, three, and then here we're gonna have a crossing. And from there we can go to one below and place a corner piece, but attach it to the other pipes. That's important because. If you attach it to the body, then part of the frame remains, which isn't the biggest of deals, but it's just, let's uh, let's be consistent. So now we're gonna do one, two, three, and we're gonna do a T-junction, because this is the end. Let me, uh, let me get some lights in here. It's always night in Scrap Mechanic Survival. And we're gonna go up, 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 place cross sections there and there, but here we're gonna place another T and go one more up, and then we're gonna place a corner pointing forward because this is where the where the framing stops. And let's get some more straight pipes. If I find my storage chests, my trucks keep slipping and I, d I have no idea where I even started. I think they're, yeah, they're <laughs> under, the, under the truck. This is not the best place to build. Is this, is, is this what I have for straight pieces? Well, I'm, uh, oh, that's why. I'm gonna take some stuff from here and I'm gonna show you a bit more of the pattern and then I'm gonna time-lapse the rest of it because uh, this could take a while and you could just repeat this pattern 
think there's also a few placed on the ground. I'll look those up. I don't like uh, loose ends and missing parts any more than, uh, than any of you. So up here, of course, straight one, T-junction, etc. You could just finish this pattern. And on this side, one, two, three, cross section, one, two, three, cross section, one, two, three. And here we're also gonna place a cross section and we're also gonna go down and place a corner. We can attach it to the frame. And we're also gonna attach it like this. So it looks like it's attached to the side of the cab, but it's actually, it can still fall down. Now, if you made the truck longer to make space for the crane, then you're gonna wanna do it a bit differently. I'll show you. I wish I could put this in the lights. <laughs> if I fold it down, you can see this started as, a tr as just as that truck. So you do still get the same, the same pattern, but then uh, you have nothing in the middle and then we can make something like this. But I can show you that later when we're, uh, when we're adding a crane. Yep, let's first just uh, get back to this. Where's my truck? There's my truck. I'm a little distracted and, uh, and feeling woozy today. As I said, I'm a little bit under the weather, so uh, I will make a couple mistakes. Apologies. I'll try and edit it in such a way that it's not too much of a train wreck. And T-junction on top. Is that the same height as everyone else? Yes. Place some more. Place some more of those corners. Why? There it is. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. And you could just uh, follow this pattern. Let me just um, finish this in uh, in an edit because I am still missing a lot of parts and it's gonna take a while. See you in a bit. All right, and let's place those last final pieces. And there we finally have the side frame thing. So let's see if I did it correctly and it all moves down as one piece. I really thought I would have uh, accidentally put one of those pipes on the on the body. Nope, that's it. Awesome. So that's one side. Of course, on the other side, we're going to do exactly the same. So I'll just jump cut to when this is done. And thanks to the power of editing, the left fence is done too, just like that. I totally didn't have to make six more trips upstairs because I kept running out of the straight pipes. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Of course, we've got to do some painting. We've got to do make that trim. Of course, I should have brought those materials with me on my last trip. And we're going to do some, uh, some details. I'm going to make a bit of a roof, but I do like to keep it pretty much open because um, well it's easier to get in and out it can be tricky to get out especially if your car is at an angle or whatever you can do another row I guess something like this and yeah I'll probably leave it like this you could make a middle part but I don't I don't see uh, just see what you like this is probably already more than I have there let's have a quick peek it is weight too, so that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I have two rows in the front and one extra row here. So that's uh, that's what I would recommend. And yeah, let's uh, let's start painting. I should have a bunch of paint with me. Of course, it's nighttime again. Everyone's favorite, but maybe we'll be done just as the sun rises and we get to see a, a good view. I've got 200 paints that should do. I like to, um, luckily, I like the pipes uh, in their default color, so that saves you a whole lot of paint. Uh, I like this darker, the second darkest brown, it looks like uh, stained wood, it looks really nice and fancy. Of course, you can also go for something like this. This looks like, like a bit more affordable wood, and uh, more like uh, something you don't mind getting scratched up. This might be a bit more realistic or something, but I just like this. Looks a bit more fancy. Paint these individually. And 
this it should cover it let's see what will i do for this one i think i will i might make this one lime green or light blue i already have a red one Could go for army green i do like army green yeah i'm gonna try army green see what that looks like is this the red one or is it no i think this or is it this one? Hmm. It's that olive gra drab. It does look really cool, but if it's wood, then it looks a bit dirtier, maybe. Let's set the engine to somewhere above the middle. It's nice and speedy. Let's see if these are, yep, these work. Why will it not drive? Did I not connect the engine to the seats? Oh, we do need fuel in the engine. Ha! Ah. Yep, it does work. That's always good. Hmm, maybe I'll just make it red again. Doesn't matter. I can always repaint. It's uh, mostly large sections, so it's not that expensive anyways. Is this the same color? I think so. And let's do right lights on the outside, white lights on the inside. Now we already have a bit more light here. Sometimes I'm tempted to put side lights on all the vehicles, just so we can see more when we're going through a dense forest. I have done it with some vehicles, it's really nice. And this, let's see, what are we gonna do with the floor? I think I'm just gonna go with gray again. And I'm gonna be careful not to overspray because then we're gonna paint the side. This is pretty dark though. Maybe because it's night. I'm gonna keep it pretty minimalist looking here. It's a work truck. Of course, it depends what level seat you have, how it looks. Now I'm kinda tempted to make this one black so it matches a bit more, but it's still doesn't match doesn't matter do whatever you want i'm gonna make these pipe pieces dark gray and i'm gonna make some more stuff gray here just so it doesn't stand out too much make it all a bit more subdued i'm gonna make the wheels light gray and the shocks Hmm, I'm thinking white. I think that's what I did on the other one too. Doesn't matter. Of course, this is all uh, something you should uh, decide for yourself. Let's see. Let's make this red too, because it is part of the body. And I'm going to make all this metal black. Of course, it really doesn't matter. But it feels... I don't know. Like it might be coated against rust or something. IRL. I'm gonna do the switches. I guess I can make the switches gray just to make them uh, stand out a bit less. Yeah, that's it. Oh wait, I gotta go make one more tr uh, trip upstairs so I can get the I-beam pieces. Very important. All right, back with the I-beam pieces. Please let it be enough. Yeah, it looks like a bunch. And these are always paint sinks. Still waiting for the, the wedges. Everyone's excited about chapter two coming up. I'm like, yeah. However, just some stuff like wedges and all the other parts from the from creative would also make me quite happy. Of course, I am really excited to see uh, what they will come up next when it comes to story mode. But it feels like what should be pretty minimal work. Oh, are you kidding me? I have one, two, f I'm missing one. <laughs> Well, I can't end the, uh, end the video with one too, uh, one too few. <sighs> Gotta be kidding me. 
But yeah, as I was saying, I feel like uh, just some minor additions, like stuff is already 3D modeled and it already works with other objects. It feels like it should be really little effort to to get that uh, to get those parts in the game, and that would make it uh, a much more enjoyable experience, if you ask me. Because well, you would get to decorate your homes, and I I could have a whole lot of fun with just. Uh, yeah, building my base, even if there's no storyline, or not too much, yeah, barely any storyline yet. I don't mind, I just, uh, I just like building, and it could be more fun. But I get, I, I understand, it's a small team, and uh, everyone's asking for other stuff, so and you gotta prioritize and all that, so I don't, uh, I don't want to give them a hard time for it, it's just, it feels so, just that one tiny thing. <laughs> And there we have it. That's the truck. I am pretty sure uh, it's uh, the same. Of course, I will also show you the crane stuff. Mm, let's have one quick peek underneath. See if uh, if I didn't miss anything. And double check the stiffness on these springs. Yep. Let's take it for a very quick test drive. And then we're gonna continue with the crane stuff. Nice. Good to have a simple truck again. I really like the crane truck. Uh, it's... Uh, wow. I sold this as such a stable and easy to drive truck and then I flip it in 5 seconds of course. Everything can be flipped in Scrap Mechanic. It's just some things can be flipped a lot less. Um, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, the crane. I really like the crane truck. It is super nice for collecting farmers. It is not... Uh, there are games where it's easier to uh, to operate cranes. I could have made it fancier and everything and blah blah blah. But it's so much better than hammering them in the back. Especially up a, up a hill or up the slope of the ramp and stuff. It's, uh, it's so nice to uh to be able to use that arm so i really like it but sometimes it is really nice to have a simpler truck because this one just drives nicer has a lower center of gravity and it's a bit less complexity if i go mining then uh, the few frames i save really helps because i am pretty sure for mining frame rate uh, affects how effective your saw blades and your drills are so that's a bit of an uh yeah a bit of a a thing that I'm not overly fond of so yeah it's nice to also have this one and uh, this is the hill that I live and that's the hill I have as a garage I could just whoop fly there with my flyer and, uh, and pick up the other truck if I want uh, and now I have space for another truck so first off I'm actually gonna get rid of this I'll do that very quickly I won't bore you with that too much and um, yeah this is done in no time at all and then I'm gonna show you how to make this frame that's that's there that's also pretty easy whoop. Uh, whoop. and we're just gonna weld this back this is just again to save on some frames because it does uh, it does matter sadly Maybe the devs are also working hard on the optimization. I really hope so. I, yeah, performance could be better for me, but I'm also using an older PC, so it might always stay a little bit on the lower frame rate, frame rate end, and I don't mind at all. It just would be nice if I could make videos with a bit more uh, a bit higher production value but I should get a new PC in not too long so um, here we have this extra piece of frame mm, so these corner pieces were part of what we built before and then we have one two oh actually that's it two straight pieces a cross section three straight pieces cross section, one straight piece, cross section, free again, cross
cross section and then two. I don't know why I did it like this. I probably should move these outwards a bit, but it also kind of matches this thing, uh, this arm. So I also like it. This bit seems a bit sturdier. And then we go up one more level. That's one more straight piece. And then we have a corner, some straight pieces, T junctions here. Well, I don't think I have to uh, show you exactly how to build this. I can. Uh, you can always make a screenshot or uh, make a little uh, no uh, scribble something on a notepad if it helps. Now I will show you. I will uh, take a, take apart this arm. Actually, you gotta remove that part too. Whoop. And then I will show you how to build that one. All right. So if all went well. We should have three empty rows here. We made it four longer, but of course we used one row for this fence. So we're just gonna find the middle part here and place a bearing. And I already attached that to a controller. I'll show you the inside here. I placed three controllers. Uh, I again, they already had uh, upgrades, but um, you don't need two of these can just be level one controllers. Of course, upgraded ones go faster. And this one will be connected to the claw that has four bearings. So this one you will probably need to upgrade to level three. And I put five switches down. I connected uh, switch one to controller one, switch two to controller two, switch three to controller three. And four and five I will leave for the uh, pistons. If I made it more complex, I would need even more controls. It would be impossible to remember after you haven't used it for a week. Uh, so I thought this would be a, a decent, decent compromise, I hope. So let's start with, let's see, I have a whole bunch of parts. I wish these would stack. Let's take out these things and um, yeah, two of these ends, some straight ones. And yeah, we'll go from there. So first we're gonna place, yeah, a part like this. And then we're gonna place this one, this T junction end. I guess it doesn't matter all too much how you place it, but I just like to be consistent with it. All right. And from there, we're gonna go up. I like, yeah, placing them like this and like this. You could also rotate them if you like that look better. But this feels sturdier to me. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually not entirely sure. And then we're gonna extend them and we're gonna go put on two short ones. Like so and so. And then on top, we're going to put some corner pieces going forward like so and so. And then we're going to put a bearing on one of these. You could do it on either side, but it doesn't need to be all that strong. And now we're going to put some more corners. I Yeah, I should have more corners. I didn't have room in my inventory for those. Thinking, how can I not have enough corners again? I just dismantled this thing. And I'm gonna put those here, and then we're gonna add I beams in the same way, and some long boys. Like this, this, and this, and I should probably first place the bottom bits because that's gonna be a little bit easier than somehow trying to place them underneath. Get this right. Cool, now let's press one. No, one was the thing. With two it rotates, as you can see, it is a little cramped, um, but I thought this looked best. Uh, it will, the bearing will stretch ever so slightly, but it's fine. 
I didn't want to give it another block of room because then it looked so empty in here. So now we're going to place some chests here. I like to place them like this. Give them one block of safety from bots. And also makes it a bit easier for you to get on the truck. Because it can be tricky to get on here. But if you crouch jump, you can get in here. And you can get in here. Or you can... Uh, oh, or you can get in a seat from here. It's a bit cramped, but it works just fine. Now, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how long I made this arm. I don't think too long. And I guess I can see it from... Uh, from how many parts I have left. These I'm gonna put yeah like this I guess or you could jump back in the video see if I did it differently uh, before. No I like it differently. I like it like this so from the side it looks solid. And then we have a corner pointing no wait then we have a piston then we have a corner pointing down then we have another piston and then we have the claw it's the claw if anyone's really seen um, what's it called um, liar liar back in the day really showing my age here so let me just quickly uh, get a mental note of how I built this so I can rebuild it long pipes on the end Junctions, junctions, two, and one, two, three, four. Yeah. So we're gonna place a T-junction with open ends in the front and back. Then we're gonna place two more T-junctions on either end. Then we're gonna do straight pieces. These are the right ones, yep. One, two, three, four. So two on each end and two on each end. Then we're gonna place some bearings because of course we want this thing to be able to open then some corner pieces pointing out if you point them down it's all gonna collide and uh, then we should be able to place one two three four actually let's connect this to controller number three so it doesn't all jiggle about yeah it's better one two three four one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. This claw is gonna have to be uh, pretty big to be able to uh, get the farmers in there. It's a bit of a chungus. No, I'm not entirely sure what I had for the angles before, but we'll figure it out. Let's see, your red is that way, red is that way, red is that way, red is that way. Yeah, so now they should all behave in the same way. Let's jump in the seat. Um, this is, yeah, actually I have it connected like this. This one is connected to switch one. This one is connected to switch two, then three is for the first piston, four goes to the second piston, and a five goes to this controller with four mm, with four bearings. Now let's just set all of these default angles and see how it behaves. That is the wrong way. That's fine. We can make these all negative 30. I, uh, the first time around I built it the other way that's not really consistent let's see how is this this is uh, actually I, when it's open I want it to be all the way like this and when it closes I think I want them to close 60 degrees and I think it should be uh, pretty snug let's have a look all right activate the switch Yeah, that's perfect. I'm pretty sure that's exactly how it, how I had it because there was about one block of space in between. Nice. Cool. Let's try all the other controls. Actually, let's set this to around six and this to around six. I think that's right. And 
rotation set to 90 and for this one for controller one lifts the arm i like to lift the arm around 45 degrees because that's enough to clear this so that's which one that's more than enough even with a farmer then with two it goes to the side i usually like to uh, pick them up from the right side that's just uh, yeah how i'm used to it then one brings it down three extends you kind of already have to extend when you bring it down because this works but it's a bit cramped then you open it with five and if you see like oh it's not it's actually a bit too far then you can just from your seat i mean you have to get up from your seat but standing on your seat you could just extend it by a couple or if you're like oh shit the ground isn't level it needs to go a bit lower then you can extend that one too and then you could do four and just kind of squeeze it in if uh, if how do i if it's right here the the farmer like right here it's off center that doesn't matter it'll just squeeze it in that's pretty nice it's slightly flexible oh bring it up two four three and bring it down it's also nice if you are just uh, if you just have to transport one you could just keep it in the claw and uh, bring it down and it's pretty stable but i think you have already maybe you've already been, uh, been able to see that from the footage i uh, spliced in earlier so of course we need to paint this let's see if i have enough paint and let's see if i can get some light up in here uh did i dump the paint no i still have the paints but i have a little bit more here let's also take out the gun just in case i haven't seen any bolts here during my building session it's really uh appreciated <laughs> they can be annoying i'm thinking about going all dark gray i'm pretty sure that's what i did before looks nice and uh, utilitarian and uh yeah looks like work equipment if you ask me i like a uh, minimalist design i guess and simple looking stuff i will for once paint a bearing because this yellow bearing just sticks out like a sore thumb i'm just happy i can get in between there also do the pistons and for these parts i will do them all light gray because I think it looks a bit better on these corner pieces do, 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 do. it's nice to do a, a building tutorial again oh what did I just paint is it the floor maybe it's just a pipe I probably painted a random pipe piece there I'm gonna have to find it because I need to know if it looks different I will not rest until I know. But yeah, it's nice to be uh, to do the tutorial again. I'm um, thinking about doing a few more. I don't know when. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I should do a tutorial. Um, man, I'm stuck. <laughs> ah, I'm thinking about doing a tutorial about flyer. Uh, I could do this one, but this one takes four thrusters. That means 200 component kits to get them to max uh, power and max efficiency. And I need four of these pistons at level five. And you need a good seat. Um, so I will do a tutorial on how to make this one, but maybe first I should do one about a super, uh, a super basic flyer that you can make with one or two, probably two thrusters. Single thruster flyers are are fun it's nice to quickly get up a warehouse but i don't know how useful they are so let's jump in the seat i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go test it because uh, all the farmers i know are um, are actually despawned i mean picked up i recently got uh, about six farmers in a trip and i haven't found too many campgrounds yet despite being in this world for literally over a year in-game. So, um, 
yeah, I can't test it, but I've, uh, I've shown you before. So yeah, that's it. Um, I'm pretty sure I've shown you everything. Let's have a quick peek. Um, oh yeah, I have never shown you this. I put some, uh, I put some control, uh, some, some logic here. I just placed an end and a nor. Yeah, end going into timer at minimum setting, going into nor, going into timer. And then I have switch free going into the end gate. And if you connect this to anything, you could uh, demonstrate it with a light, uh, you get a repeating pattern. So normally I don't connect this gate that the switch is connected to. I don't connect it to um, a light, but I connect it to a vacuum pump. And that way I can just park it at the package station and I can just have it uh, deposit all the fruits and vegetables and then I can uh, put down the bed, put down the ramp and I can just catch some packages and bring them to the truck or usually I just wait but I at least can go there and stack them in such a way that they don't cause too much lag if I am going to deliver more than 20 and it's really nice but before I ramble even more I should uh, I should end it here Thanks for watching everybody, make sure to let me know if you want to see more uh, tutorials or if you just want to see survival gameplay. Of course, um, there's not a whole lot for me to do in survival, but I can uh, I can maybe show some more ticks and trips, uh, or maybe uh, I've also been tempting, tempted to do uh, a different kind of playthrough, or uh, there's also the, the challenge mode I haven't done much of. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you want to see. and. Uh, Otherwise, I'll probably just make a, a tutorial on the, on the flyer next. So again, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.